What's up, guys? Welcome back. Um, we're here with Megan Furtney from Duke at the Washington Duke in the team academic room. So getting the kind of the inside scoop into where y'all, you know, hang out, where you do you do a lot of homework here? Or? Yes, actually. Really? Um, a lot of my teammates come in here and do work as well. So this is definitely one of the like hangout spots for us. Is this like the main study spot? Yeah, this is probably one of like top three. Okay. Sure. I did see the 20 questions with Erica that y'all did last year. Mm -hmm. And you said you like to study here. And we're actually going to review a couple of those questions and see if your answers okay. have changed. Sounds good to me. And yeah, um, we just got off the course, um, played the front nine here at Duke, did a little 1v1 match. Uh, How would you think that went? You know, I think we had both had a bit of a rough start. Yeah. Um, definitely had some some good shots and some really bad shots for yeah. both of us. Some yeah. really lucky breaks for me, I think, and I think that's all I'll say for now. The first few holes, yeah, yeah. people are going to be like, "Wow, this girl really, really gets some." I think you had a teammate responses. out there like throwing the yeah, ball out from I the woods have. on the first few gonna, holes. I, I'm not going to like say anything about that. I don't want to be guilty of anything. So. <laughs> I'm guilty too. What happened on the first hole was very sketchy all around, but <laughs> yeah. that unmarked ball. It's very true. So it is Masters week. Not 100% sure when this video is going to drop, but it's currently Saturday at the Masters. Um, so yeah, big week for golf. Who'd you have coming mm -hmm. into the week? So we actually did like a family pool where we pick players that are ranked at different levels. And so I picked... Like, I actually didn't pick Tiger Woods. Really? A lot of people pick Tiger Woods. I didn't, even though I love Tiger Woods. Yeah. Um, so, like, a big one for me was Justin Thomas. I don't okay. know how he's playing in it today. He played well yesterday. He did play well yeah. yesterday, so I saw that. So yeah. he was one of my top picks. I don't have, like, a specific person I thought was going to win, but he was my pick. Um, so, Queen Neiman? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I picked him. Joaquin um, Neiman. Yeah, he's been, like he he's played been with looking. he's been playing with Tiger. Yeah, I days. didn't I didn't pick Scotty Shuffler, which I'm kind of bummed about. Yeah. I, that was a pick I missed out on because he's been playing pretty well. Would you pick? Do you think he'll finish off? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Five I've, strokes is a lot. Yeah, I don't know what it it's is. at right now, but yeah, but anything can happen at Augusta National. I mean, that course is a is a beast of its own. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, um, so hopping into it a little more. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, Megan is a junior here at Duke University, where she is a two-time Women's um, Golf Coach Association All-American. Congrats there. You. Um, you've had a lot of success playing for one of the top women's golf programs in the country, and you've also achieved a lot, um, you know, before you even stepped foot on campus, winning the 2019 USGA Women's Four Ball with future, I guess now current teammate, Erica Shepard. Um, and also playing the 2019 U.S. Open, which we talked a lot about on the course and is absolutely crazy. Um, off the course, you're super into fitness and all sports, and you also run a podcast with Jensen called Tea to Green. Um, thanks so much for coming on and excited to get into it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm glad you took the time to chat with me about yeah, this. Yeah, definitely. Stuff. Excited to definitely hear about your, you know, podcast experience with Jensen, who, you know, we've obviously already had on, you know, hear what you guys what you guys do and how it all works behind the scenes for y'all. Um, so yeah, I want to start off, you know, talking about your early life and, you know, going back to the beginning of how you got into golf. You come from a super athletic family, you told me. So can you talk a little bit about that? And, you know, with all the sports that you played and everybody in your family played, how golf, you know, rose to the top? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my mom played D1 college basketball at the University of Minnesota, and my dad played D2 football for a little while in Minnesota as well. Um, and like they, so they both just absolutely love sports. I mean, like any sport. Yeah. Um, and so growing up, I have two younger brothers, like all three of us tried everything. I mean, there was a point in time where I was playing like on a co-ed co softball team with um, one of my brothers. Like, so we did that. Yeah. I tried gymnastics for like a year. <laughs> Didn't go very well, obviously, like I'm here um, and not a gymnast. Um, so I, I tried just about everything possible. And, you know, I played, I played golf and basketball all through middle school. Um, and by the time I got to high school, I kind of was like, I just feel a lot more passionately about golf. Yeah. Um, there's just something about like the, the intensity of it that I just like, it just really drew me to it. And I kind of realized with basketball that there was just more of a risk for injury than yeah. anything. And I knew I wanted to play college golf at that point. Yeah. And so that's kind of when I had to make the choice to part ways with basketball and go more into golf. And that's kind of where that's I cool. took it from there. Yeah. Was college basketball like ever on the table for you? Honestly, not really. Yeah. And I think a part of the reason why is because, like, my mom, she never had any expectations with any of it. Like, yeah. she never, like, was like, 
I played like D1 basketball. Like my daughter, like is gonna have to play D1 yeah. basketball. Like they were literally like, we're gonna let you try all these sports, and like we just want you to do what you like. Yeah. And I think being able to have that from both my parents just helped me to really find my own thing, and I just really took golf up. And my brothers didn't; they hated it. Yeah. And so like here I am, the only golfer in my immediate family, and I'm loving it. Yeah, you do have two cousins who play college golf, though, right? Yeah. So, so I had a cousin play golf at Oklahoma State. Um, and she graduated a couple years ago, and then I also had a cousin who played golf in Nebraska as well. So cool. having them kind of as, like, role models was really yeah. cool, too. Yeah, there's got to be some good competition there. Those are pretty good golf schools also. Yeah, I mean, they're a, probably a good five or six years older than me. Okay. Um, but, I mean, like, when I was 12, 13 years old, like, I looked up to them. Like, I was yeah. like, these girls are amazing. And I got to caddy for the youngest cousin um, who played Oklahoma State, Kenzie. Um, and one of the U.S. junior girls before I had oh, qualified awesome. for my first one. So yeah. being able to, like, go see what that experience was like before actually playing it was so cool. And, like, to be on the bag, I was just, like, in awe the whole time of, like, yeah. all of these girls. And then it was you just, like, a few years later. So that's... Yeah, and actually the one of the first times I played, the second year I played in the U.S. junior, she came and caddied for me. Oh, really? So, Rolls like, flipped. We, yeah, that's we good. had these pictures where, like, we wore the caddy bibs for each other, and it was really cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think, you know— Coming from a super athletic family, like, you obviously have some innate athleticism, like, you played a ton of sports. Um, do you think that helps you in golf, or do you think, I don't know, golf is, like, unique in that way. Like, anybody can be good at it. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think there is some sort of unique advantage that you have in that sense? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I think even just from, like, a physicality standpoint, like, my, my whole family is very tall. Like, I'm the shortest person in my family. Really? Like, I'm, like, 5'8 and a half, yeah. almost 5'9". Yeah. And I'm, like, if you look at our family pictures, I'm by far, like, the shortest person, <laughs> which How is How tall is your mom funny. playing college um, basketball? She's 6'1". Really? Yeah. My dad's six foot. My youngest brother, who's getting recruited for football, he's, like, 6'4", like, 235 pounds. Dang. Um, so, like, I'm just, like, the little tiny yeah. one. But I'm um, still, like, that, yeah. you know, being able to, like, inherit some of those genes has definitely helped a lot just in terms of like being able to hit the ball kind of far yeah um and just like really just like from a competitive aspect too like I've just always been so competitive with my family and like even though no one else really has played golf competitively like just always wanting to be like the best yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just want to like beat each other and have bragging rights kind of thing yeah. so that also has really helped a lot too yeah you're from St. Charles Illinois mm -hmm. um which is not Chicago just outside Chicago, Chicago but do you do you tell people you're from Chicago? I do tell people I'm from Chicago. I mean, when they last ask, like, oh, we're in Chicago, and I'm like, St. Charles, they're like, yeah, I don't know where that yeah. is. So I'm like, that's exactly yeah, what I said. Yeah, that I'm is from fair. Chicago. Um, yeah, obviously it's not, you know, we were complaining about 50 degrees and windy here, but it's not like that up there. And, you know, golf's an outdoor game, so how are you able to, you know, get so good and get to the point where you're playing these huge events, being recruited by Duke um, with it snowing, like, you mm -hmm. know, half the year yeah i mean yeah i know some people right now in a college event pretty close to home and it was snowing today in april yeah. um <laughs> which is crazy but that's just kind of how life is in the midwest and so growing up with that kind of weather you know you just try to make the most of it with training trips you know my my swing coach tim charity um is down in florida so i would spend a lot of like friday saturdays in high school going to see him and work with him um, and then when I wasn't able to do that, I would go to the hitting bays or the, the domes where a lot of people go and you just work on mechanics there. And yeah. then what's a dome? You don't know what a dome uh -uh. is? Really? It's like, like it's an just, indoor range. Like, yeah. Like an indoor range. Like really? it literally looks like a, it's like a huge dome. Are they like, like a 300 white, yards? Like, like, can you hit driver? Like a, um, it's usually a little bit less than that, but you like just hit it into the wall. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's okay, almost okay. like I've, a net, but it's yeah. just like a giant. Like, That's cool. Yeah, it's, it is cool. Like, yeah. I don't know. I didn't realize people don't know what that is. That's um, funny. But, yeah, so then you do that, and then whenever you're not practicing, you try to get in a couple tournaments, and that's what I would do is play once or twice in the winter and just get down and hit off grass. And yeah. that's when you go straight to the putting green, yeah. and I would, I would try to get some short game feel going on. Yeah. Um, you said it's still snowing. So, like, when in the year would you typically be able to, you know, actually consistently get out on the golf course? Yeah, I would say April's still pretty sketchy up north. Dang. Um I mean, you have some weekends like this, but then also I think like two weekends ago, it was like 65. Yeah. So that you just don't know what you're going to get quite yet. But then once you get to May, it's like consistently like you have pretty good weather and you can get out every day and play. Yeah. How do you think that either like tampers or I don't know, I guess like enhances your game and I would say from a golf game standpoint, the only thing that really hurts is your short game, yeah. your short game and like just your feel when you're playing golf, like maybe distances a little bit and 
man- course management can hurt just yeah. because you're not used to playing golf for yeah. a good five months of the year. But besides that, I mean, everything else really isn't much different. Yeah, I yeah. think in terms of my swing, it gets a lot better because you're, that's what you're able to focus on. And then yeah. when you go play, you're like, I've worked on my swing for five months. It doesn't get better than yeah. this. Like, I'm just going to go hit the ball. Yeah. Like, you completely trust it. Yeah. We did um, talk about this yeah. on the range and playing. Like, you are... A pretty mechanical golfer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm the same way. You do a lot of drills, a lot of practicing. Um, do you think that you know relates at all to coming from Illinois and it being so cold up there and doing a lot of indoor work? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I was just so used to that timeline for so long. I mean, from when I was 13 all the way till my senior year of high school, that's what I would do. Yeah. And so I just got so used to to golfing that way. And I think since coming to college, obviously you have the opportunity to play a lot more yeah. down here in North Carolina. I mean, this this is like a typical winter day for us, 55 and windy, yeah. 15 windy, which isn't bad at all compared to what I could have back home. So I kind of try to get a little bit more of a mix. You know, I'll do a little bit of drill work um, and then go out and play. So I can kind of try to get a little bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Is it a little harder now though? Like, or how is it at least your freshman year making that transition from being, you know, super swing work, super mechanical to being forced to, you know, like it's a good thing, but no way forced to go out and play, you know, tournaments mm-hmm. almost every week. Yeah, I would say it's it's a lot on me to just make sure that I'm really like prioritizing what I want to work on. Yeah. And really making sure that I have like a clear uh, schedule I'm committed to every week of like, here's what I want to get done. Yeah. If I'm going to go work on drills, if I'm going to go do um, like swing mechanical work, just making sure I know exactly what I want to do and get it done because I don't have like two months you know, from February to, yeah. to April where I can just work on my swing yeah. and play any tournaments. Yeah. You, you get into it almost right when you get back second yeah. semester. So um, it's really just about kind of finding your priorities with almost anything yeah. as a college athlete. Yeah. I mean, even in high school, I don't think you had too much of an issue. You won three AJGAs and your scoring average as a senior in high school is 67.7. I don't <laughs> yeah, know if don't you knew know. that. <laughs> I did not know that. I, I don't know where you found that. That is like... <laughs> I'm even like, dang, that's that's pretty low. Yeah, but, that's. I mean, that's very good. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank so you. yeah, for not playing a ton, that's a pretty solid scoring average. And then you came to Duke in the fall of 2019, but mm-hmm. that summer before, um, you obviously had a pretty huge summer, um, starting out by winning your first USGA championship at the U.S. Women's Four Ball with Erica Shepard, who's now also a junior at Duke and your teammate. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was that like? That week was just like, we, we have, we actually, last night we're in our apartment together and we have this picture of us that's hanging up of us yeah. with the trophy and we just look back on it all the time. And we're just like, that was like the craziest week of our lives yeah. for so many reasons. And I still think even now we sometimes forget just like how big of a deal that was because especially because we got to share that moment together yeah. you know to be able to like share a championship like that with another person is so rare especially in golf and just for us to be able to have that together and to be able to go out and like just have fun and like really trust each other's games is like that's all you can ask for and like, yeah. we just had we had a blast with it yeah that's really cool to see how she's your teammate now did you know her before the event i'm you must you played together so you must have known her a little yeah bit. we we knew each other since we were probably about like 12 years old there's actually a picture of us the first time we met the first tournament where she finished like second i finished third in the ajga so we both had like our little trophies and we have this little picture i'll have to find it somewhere but um that's the first time we met and i mean since then and we've we've only grown up like three hours apart which is a very far for the golf world yeah so i've known her for a very long time and that, that actually wasn't y'all's first four ball together, right? Mm-mm. No, we played together the year before that out in California, and we lost in the semifinals. So we felt just short. You knew you could do it. Yeah, we yeah. had a little bit of extra motivation going into that second year. Yeah. What was the pressure of the 2019 event like, knowing, you know, playing with Erica? Is there a sense of pressure about letting her down, or, you know, how does that mm-hmm. play into the... Yeah, so... During especially that second event, there were some stretches of holes where I started playing poorly. Yeah. And I would go up to her and I'd be like, I am so sorry. Like, I feel so bad. Like, I'm letting the team down. And yeah. she would just look at me and be like, stop talking. Yeah. She's like, don't even say that because, like, that's just not true. I trust you. Like, I got you. You got me. Like, just go out and do your thing and it'll work out. Yeah. And as soon as she told me that, I went to the next hole and hit the par five and two made birdie. Yeah. Um, and so being able to, like, have someone so close to you where they can say that to you, I think was like a big part of why we're able to be successful, yeah. um, like as a duo. And like, I just think that was like the key to our success. Yeah. Ultimately. And you also didn't use caddies, which 
I'm, I'm assuming you're one of the only teams not to. Mm-hmm. Um, so why did you make that decision? And, you know, what does that say about your relationship with her? Yeah, so the first year we played together, um, we actually didn't even have caddies in the qualifier. And we really decided to just because we felt like we knew each other's games really well. Yeah. Um, especially, I don't know I don't know how we knew this so well of each other, but we basically knew each other's distances with clubs. Like, yeah. if she really wanted me to, I probably could have told her what club to hit. Yeah. Which is like, so I don't know how we knew like that. So you together a lot, like in high school. Yeah. And, okay, and, cool. Um, so we just like, and we would pick up on each other's habits really well. Yeah. And... We were like, honestly, like we we know we can just talk to each other. Yeah. We were like, why have caddies when we're both so knowledgeable? And if we have something we need, we need to talk about, we can just ask each other. Yeah. And so we just kind of did that and rolled with it. Yeah. I mean, we got to the we got the second year we played and played a Tim on one, won, like every putt that week I had, she just read it for me. Yeah. I was like, you give me the line, I'll hit it there, and I'll I'll make it. Like, just give yeah. me a good line. That's good. If you miss it, you can just point it on her, (laughs) too. Gosh, that was such a bad line. Uh, But, yeah, so it was really cool to just see it work out that way. Yeah, yeah. You did make, you told me earlier, it was like 15 feet on the last hole. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like make or go home kind of thing. Y'all were Mm -hmm. up. But Mm -hmm. what was making that fight on the last hole like? Yeah, so, I mean, that hole in itself was actually kind of crazy because off the tee I hit it way right into the trees and mm-hmm. this was one of those golf courses where like if you're in the trees it's like super dense yeah. it's really hard to get out so I'm in the trees she hits the fairway so I'm like okay like I'm just gonna get it out get it in play like she's in a good spot so like we're in good shape yeah um, this is one of those moments in best fall when you're kind of banking on the other yeah, person a little, a little bit, bit. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah like she's got it like, yeah. like it's Erica like if anyone's got it, it's for sure her. Yeah. Like, um, and so then she ends up hitting it um, a little bit right on the green. She has like, I don't know, 30 feet or something yeah. like that. I punch out and I have like 80 yards into the green. Um, and the girls were playing against one of them. I think like misses the green. She's in a bunker. And the other hits her green, hits the green, like with like a three wood or something yeah. crazy. Like, oh, wow. yeah, super short hitter hits the green. Um, so then I'm sitting there with my wedge and I'm like, like, it'll be nice to get in there close, just take a little bit of pressure yeah. on Erica. So I hit it in there like 15 feet. Um, she actually ends up three putting. Yeah. Erica three putts. Um, and so then I have this putt. And there's, I think there's a video somewhere online uh-huh. where um, I have this putt and like she can't even watch because <laughs> she's so, ner- I think she's so nervous. Yeah. Um, but like I, I hit the putt and I made it. And like we talked about it afterwards. And she was like, I was so, like, like I couldn't even watch yeah. she was like I, I don't know she was just like I felt so bad I couldn't walk yeah. over and I was like really I was like you gave me that line and I felt great like I was like so yeah. trusting she in was her more nervous than and, you like, think her, I wouldn't say like throughout the whole week but I just think that moment you know sometimes yeah. especially for golfers it's a lot harder to watch like we want to like be the one in control yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you want to be the one that has the putt it's just yeah. that kind of thing where it's it's really hard to watch and you're like man I wish I was the one hitting it because when you're nervous and under that kind of pressure and you're the one playing it kind of almost like pushes you even more, especially yeah. for her and I. Yeah. I was going to ask where's, you know, who keeps the trophy, but mm-hmm. if you are roommates, I guess mm-hmm. that's not a, yeah, so, not an argument. So we actually, we only get the trophy for a year. Oh, really? And then it's like one trophy that then goes oh, like, like the circulates. Next for, yeah. Um, so when we had it, we actually just kept it here in the building. Okay. Um, so they had it on display, which was pretty cool. Okay. And, you know, I have to get it back this summer. I know. That would be pretty cool. Are y'all going to try to find it again? Um, so I think it's actually during our conference this okay. year, unfortunately. But maybe after college, you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see. Um, so later that same summer, you played in the 2019 U.S. Open, um, which, I mean, that's got to be insane. It's the U.S. Open. Yeah. Um, what was that experience like? Yeah. I mean, I think one of the feelings I'll never forget is when I qualified. Yeah. I mean, I, I got really lucky. It worked out well where the qualifier was actually at a course that was like 20 minutes from my house. Uh-huh. Um, and it was a private course, so I hadn't like grown up playing it. Yeah. But once I saw that it was that close to my house, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go out and play it a couple of times. Yeah. Like, I probably know people that are members there. So I'd get out and play it, whatever. And I got to know, like, the head pro there pretty well. And um, so I walked in after 36 holes. And my mom had caddied for me that yeah. day. And, you know, I'm sitting in there waiting for all the other girls to finish. Um, and, like, I see on the board that I had qualified. And, like, the head pro is the one, like, giving me the trophy. No like, I've gotten to know yeah. him so well. And, like just that feeling of like this this just happened yeah. like I just like qualified for the U.S. Open yeah. like my mom and my dad are both there and like I had friends from my high school team come out and watch yeah, and just like cool. be able to share that moment with so many people was like so special in itself and that's before I even got to the tournament yeah so like I just knew it was going to be good yeah. you know just from how old were you that. at the time just for I was 17 that's no crazy. I was 18 okay. I was 18 
because um, that was my senior spring. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, just before I even got there, I'm like, this is, like, the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And then, I mean, getting there and, like, when we first pulled up in the car and they, like, had a valet to take your car for you, uh-huh. I'm like, this is big time. Yeah. You know, like, this is this is it. Yeah. This is, like, it doesn't get better than yeah. this. Where was it that year? Charleston, South Carolina. Cool. At the Country Club of Charleston. Yeah. Um, and, like, I remember seeing, like, so many other pros pulling up in their car. Like, you get... A rental car like they like give you one it has like like 2019 us open at Ch- country club really? charleston on the car like it's like wow. this, it's so cool yeah um and like you know you're going out and practicing and i had a couple of the duke alums like would come up and say hi to me uh-huh. and be like hey like i'm so-and-so like so yeah. nice to meet you uh it was really cool to like just have that kind of experience and yeah, like, and you're like i know who like, you still are come yeah. To me. yeah i'm yeah. like of course <laughs> I know who you are. I've, I've seen you everywhere yeah um but just, like, have people still, like, come up to you, even though you're on such a big stage, and, like, yeah. talk to you and give you that time, um, I think was what really eased some of that, like, initial, like, starstruckness of, like, yeah. oh, my gosh, I'm here. Yeah. Because people would just talk to me. Like, we all were just people, and they treated me like that, and yeah. that really helped me ease into it. Yeah. Do you have any experiences with, like, any particular golfers that, you know, are famous or that you grew up, um, you know, aspiring to be, like, mm-hmm. at the U.S. Open? Yeah, so... In both my practice rounds, I played with, like, pros I absolutely idolized. So, yeah. the first round, I played with Paula Creamer. Yeah. We talked and about this earlier. Yes, That's nuts. Like, yeah. Literally growing up, like, she had, like, the Pink Panther, like, that whole brand. Uh-huh. I literally was, like, begging my dad for these pink golf shoes that had, like, little pink bows <laughs> on the back because they were Paula Creamers, and I would get her sunglasses, like, all of that stuff. Yeah. And so, for me, to, like, play with her, like, the eight-year-old in me was, like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like literally like just quit golf now. Like this is the coolest. <laughs> this golf is ever. your peak. It's this like, is it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't get better than this. Um, but it was really neat to like be able to just be out there with her and like be in her presence of like, you know, like reflecting on like I went from being an eight year old who like looks up to this girl to now I'm like playing golf with yeah. her. Yeah. Um, I think it was a really humbling moment for me to just kinda of realize like like I can do it. Yeah. Like I you know, I can get here. Yeah. Um, so I played with her the first practice round and then the second one I played with Christy Kerr. Wow. And, you know, another like American golfer that like yeah. I was always like idolized growing up. Yeah. And how'd you like, manage I, to get such like amazing parents yeah. on your practice round? Yeah. So it's actually like pretty easy. You just like get to go online and there's like a sign up period, like a, a time slot where you can yeah. go in and like pick the time, like pick the if you'd start on one or ten and then you just like sign up. So oh, like, wow. my yeah, my dad and I were signed up and he was just like, Oh yeah, Paula Creamer, you'll play with her. I was That's like perfect. I mean, yeah, like I like to play with Paula Creamer. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um but yeah, so like playing with Christy Kerr was really cool as well. Yeah. She would just like she would come up to me and like be on her phone and be like, Oh, my kids, you know, like and I was like, Man, these are just people. Yeah. You know, and that cool. just like like they didn't like she didn't have to like do that and give me that kind of time. Yeah. I mean she did. And yeah. That was really neat. What was it like even, you know, you mentioned um, you stay in the hotel room next to you, the court is, um, mm-hmm. what was that experience like? And mm-hmm. just like, you know, not even on the golf course, but just like the environment of the U S open. Yeah. I mean, like there was the court is in the room next to me and even like you would go downstairs in the hotel and they had like posters set up of the past champions yeah. and, um, you know, like you're able to walk in the clubhouse and like they have the trophy there. And there was even one day in the clubhouse where I was eating and, um, the guy from Ghostbusters, I don't remember his name, <laughs> but he was there. Yeah. Which is like crazy. Yeah. You know, and he's literally, my mom has a, a picture where she's taking a selfie and he's in the background because uh-huh. she wanted to get a picture with him. And he's just sitting in there like eating eating lunch with yeah. some of the golfers, you know, and like to be able to like have moments like that. It's just yeah. like. Do you think you about go popping a seat next to them or. Joining them? <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely not. I was so nervous. Like I was like, that was the part where I was like. I don't want to like be like seem like I'm like a fan because yeah, I'm yeah, in the yeah. tournament too, you know. Like I'm here as well, so like, why not act like you know? Yeah. Like I, I belong here too. Yeah. Um. So that was what, kind of one of those things. Where I'm like, I'm just gonna keep eating my lunch, go through my yardage book, like you know, it's just yeah, just another day. We're able to ma- maintain that mindset on the course, like you know, not being starstruck and you know, being confident enough in yourself, saying I belong here. And yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think one of the there was a lot of reasons why I was able to be successful with that. But I think one of the biggest ones was because my brother was on the bag with me that yeah. week. Um, and him and I are only like a year and a half apart. So like we always just grew up yeah. like doing so much together. And 
Um, you know, just be able to have him on the bag and him being an athlete as well and understanding like the spotlight and that kind of pressure, like yeah, really definitely. Just, it helped me calm down so much and we were able to just have a blast together. You know, like he's like, Megan, like we're here, like let's just like let's yeah. get after it, you yeah. know? And like we're just both having a blast and like my swing coach was able to come as well. Oh, that's awesome. So having him there, like just having like almost like my little like um, like support bubble. Yeah. Like I just had people that I could like rely on and yeah. it wasn't like I was just there and I felt alone. So that was really helpful. And you had that positive mindset and you did end up playing pretty well um you missed the cut but you know it came down to the wire it happened on the last few holes on mm -hmm. friday um so yeah how did you sort of manage expectations and what were your expectations going to the event mm -hmm. yeah i mean i would say leading up to like the tournament i never really thought much about making the cut even after that first round like it wasn't really much in my mind. I was just kind of like, I think I shot like two over the first round. I was like, great. Like, yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. was like, I just played my first round in the major ever and I shot two over. I was like, considering this golf course, I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. Nice. Um, and I was actually tied with Paula Greemer and I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. My childhood idol and I just tied <laughs> with her. I was like, yeah, like I'm um, feeling pretty good. And so I never really thought about it uh, until the last couple holes of that yeah. second round where I like saw the leaderboard and I was like, got to make something happen. Um, but yeah, I would say that like just being able to kind of be surrounded by great people and I even had a lot of friends and family who flew in and came and watched me yeah, as well. Yeah, that's really nice. And so be able to just like chat with them after the round and um, I really just tried to stay in my own bubble. Like even when I was playing during the round, you know, just one shot at a time. Yeah. For I, most of my experience, like I just yeah. one shot at a time, just try to hit every green, just yeah, out of the that's rough, awesome. you know, that kind of thing. Was the course was a rough bad. The rough was pretty thick. Yeah. Um, you said you liked that when we were playing today, which, yeah. you know, I haven't heard that a lot. <laughs> really? so, I mean, I liking tall, rough and hazard yeah. is pretty rare. I think that's just a, a pretty Midwestern thing because like, that's, that's what you see at a lot of golf it's courses. Staple, yeah. Um, you know, especially courses like Medina and stuff where I've yeah. grown up and uh, Rich Harvest Farms, places like that, where, like, if you go in the rough, like, that's a one-shot penalty. Yeah. Uh, I think that's just what I'm so used to that that yeah. kind of just reminds me of, like, home. You know, that's yeah. just what I know. That's cool. So what do you, you know, you you don't mind hazards or rough, but what do you not want to see on a golf course? Um, I'd say what I don't want to see sometimes is, like, the super crown greens. Yeah. So a little yeah. bit like our home course, yeah. <laughs> um, which is which is good for me to have to play that. Yeah. Because um, it challenges me a lot. But you know, sometimes having those really tough chips where you got to hit it up high. You know, I yeah. love hitting the little bump and runs. Yeah. Um, a couple so, of really good ones today. Yeah, that's for thanks. sure. Um, so that I mean, the bump and runs are like a classic go-to. So having to hit them higher can be tough for me sometimes, um, as well as like out of bounds. You know, there's just there's no room for error with out of bounds. Yeah. Hope Valley. <laughs> yeah. Hope Valley. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, U.S. Open and four ball. Mm -hmm. um, so it does seem, you know, towards the end of high school and that summer between high school and Duke, your game really did start to come into its own. Would you say that that's true or do you think it was kind of there all along and then, you know, the scores finally just started mm -hmm. coming in for you? Yeah, I would say it was there for a while. Yeah. Um, I actually had an event a couple months before that where um, I played out at um, out in California in Palm Springs mm -hmm. where they have the a and now the Chevron. Yeah. Um, and it was like a qualifier for that. And I played pretty well there. Um, just didn't get the job done the final day um, to qualify for that event. But yeah. I was playing pretty well and felt pretty good. Um, that would be cool. Two majors in one yeah, year. Right? Yeah, right? I, I haven't really thought about that much, but that would be pretty yeah. cool. Like to be like, yeah, I played two majors when I was like 18. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like my swing was always kind of there. Yeah. And it's just about like being patient and I yeah. mean that's still true even now like I feel like a lot of times like my game is there it's just like you got to be patient you know yeah. like you're not always going to consistently play amazing golf like all right I mean, that's what I'll tell myself after yeah. <laughs> stay patient <laughs> It'll happen. I mean you haven't been playing much like you yeah. just started playing again like a couple of weeks ago so um you just got to be patient with it and like your game will always find itself yeah also the Washington Duke course is not set up well especially that, that front nine oh, is yeah. not not great yeah for your fate. Yeah. So then I um, want to transition a little bit. Before that, you were obviously recruited, um, mm -hmm. you know, stepped on campus, toured, all that. Um, so what was the recruiting process like for you and what made Duke stick out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I started looking at schools a lot, like in eighth grade slash freshman year. That's when I started taking a lot of visits. Yeah. And eighth grade, wow. Yeah, I know. I mean, the recruiting process is, I think, changed a little bit now because of, like, different rules that uh -huh. they have. I don't even know what they are now. Yeah. But... Um, just want to cover your bases then, there. Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, they, they change quite a bit. 
But yeah, I started getting recruited around then and yeah. took some visits. Um, and that was pretty common for most girls. Really? I mean, that's when they at least started. You yeah. Know? You, it was very rare for girls to like, be yeah. committing then because um, you're literally like 14 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's when I started visiting schools. And I knew kind of right away that I was like, I just want to get south. Like, yeah. I got to get away from the snow. I've yeah. had enough of this. <laughs> I had like 10 years of it. I was yeah. like, I'm good. Um, and so I looked a lot of like SEC, ACC. And I kind of knew I wanted something a little bit like far from home but not too far yeah um so stuff like california was just kind of out of the picture yeah. for me it's just that's like just way too far yeah. away um and so you know i came and visited duke the fall of my sophomore year for the first time and like i stepped on campus and i was just like people always talk about this feeling that you get yeah and i just like had this feeling yeah like just like i just felt at home yeah and, you know, after talking to the coaches, like, one of the first nights I was here, I sat and talked with Coach Brooks, like, on the patio of this hotel mm-hmm. for literally, like, three hours. Really? And, like, that was the first time that ever happened to me with any coach. And yeah. I was like, this is, like, this is just it for me. Like, yeah. I was like, this is, this is what I want. And, I yeah. mean, this place is just so special. I mean, because, like, academics are something really important to me as well. Yeah. And obviously, like, it doesn't get much better than yeah, this. Yeah, definitely. So to be able to have such an elite academic institution and also, like, such a great golf program, like two of like the top priorities for me and yeah it's great yeah yeah you mentioned academics how do you you know obviously duke women's golf and duke academics like you said are kind of at the top of the game so how do you Mm -hmm. balance you know your major schoolwork and then obviously you know playing and on some of the bigger golf stages and college golf yeah it's definitely a learning curve um jensen and i talk a lot about it about it a lot on our podcast as well it's just like you know, you really have to manage your time well. And, you know, you always hear that like, growing up and you're like, yeah, okay, I get it. It can't be that hard. But yeah. then you get to college and it's like, it is that hard. Yeah. Um, and that's not meant to be intimidating anyway, but it's just like it, you'll probably fail before you, <laughs> you're yeah. going to fail at something before you learn how to do it well. Um, and so that's definitely what happened to me. I may or may not have gotten a C in calculus my freshman <laughs> year, but hey, that's okay. Cause like, I'm, I'm still here and yeah. I'm still thriving. Um, but yeah, it's just all about like time management, really like planning ahead and planning on yeah. your days, like making sure that like we're going to ACC soon and I have like three projects due the week we get back. So I'm getting them all done this weekend. Nice. You know, just, just stuff like that. So then yeah. you can lighten the load and you know, you get to the tournament, you can really just focus on playing yeah. best golf. Yeah. You are going Tuesday, right? We are. That's awesome. Good mm-hmm. luck. Yeah. And you got this whole academics room in the golf yeah, facility. I mean, so. like, these are all plaques of like academic, all Americans and they're like, all over our walls and just to look and see how many people have been successful at managing like golf and school I think yeah. is so inspiring too because like you've been consistently <laughs> golf ACC <laughs> academic honors since you've been here so congrats there also thank you is there a plaque for you up in here yet um yeah right there actually. nice um oh right in the back yeah right you in the back though we didn't even realize yeah. it but um yeah i mean so oh, like, there's eric and gina too. exactly yeah. and i mean like leona mcguire like all of these great golfers have been extremely successful on and off the course and i mean yeah so also being able to have them and like we can still reach out to them and ask them advice as well like is really cool like yeah virginia, yeah like virginia went to oxford i think after after duke and went there for like two years like, really it's just like a, a really impressive that's insane things. yeah um, you mentioned some of the younger girls coming to you and Erica now. Um, mm-hmm. So Gina Kim, who's obviously an incredible golfer. I grew up at the same country club as her, so I know her pretty well. Um, so she was a senior and she left to go pro halfway through the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was that like for you and Erica? You know, now you're kind of thrust into the senior leadership position. Um, you know, what was that transition like? Yeah, um, I would say... In some ways, we were kind of eased into it just because Gina had Q school in the fall. Yeah. So she did have to miss a couple of events that mm-hmm. we competed in. Um, so, like, we kind of figured out our way slowly throughout yeah. the year because um, we were able to have a couple of, of weeks there where we were able to be like, okay, here's, like, what it's like when we're the old ones. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's yeah, weird yeah. to say we're the old ones now because, like, we're still, like, we feel like freshmen sometimes. Yeah. But we, we just, like, really communicate a lot. Um, yeah just kind of about like how we feel about like where the team is at or you know like if we have any goals and where we want to be and like where we are now and Duke also like has um captains meetings yeah. with all of their captains and so because we're the oldest we're the captains of the team yeah. and we're able to go and talk to all these other athletes and um talk with Greg Dale who's one of our like psychologists here who's amazing yeah um and he gives us a lot of really great advice on just like how to manage you know, being like almost in charge, you know, like yeah. being like a role model um, for yeah. some of these people or like, you know, being 
like these girls can rely on you for advice a lot of times. Yeah, and we're able to. Give so are the captains from like all the sports there? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, which yeah. is which is really cool because then we're able to talk to each other about like, oh, like what's successful for you guys? How are you yeah. successful? What's unsuccessful? And, is like, there a lot of crossover? Better. Yeah, actually there is. Yeah. Yeah, which is really which is kind of cool to see too because sometimes I think. Um, a lot of athletes tend to feel like, oh, my problems are only my problems. Like, what's wrong? Yeah. But then you realize that, like, it's actually pretty common. Yeah. You know, and people just don't talk about it. Yeah. I think what's really cool, I mean, for a little while, we shared the same academic, like, counselor with men's oh, basketball. Really? Yeah. And so even for Gina, she's had a lot of communication with, like, R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson. Yeah. And has been able to learn a lot from them. Even, and I mean, obviously when they were here, like they were like in this spot, like, like no one would oh, yeah. leave. Yeah. And that was the same year we won the national championship. Yeah. And so she would go to them and, and like they would be working on their class stuff and they'd be talking about sports and, you know, she'd just be like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling great about whatever, like yeah. my game, I don't know. And like RJ would just be like, Gina, like you've done all this work, you know, like just go do you, yeah. you know, like just stop worrying about all this other stuff. Yeah. You know, and like they, like, I mean, especially those guys, cause they just have so much attention on them. They're able to just like yeah. have this tunnel vision. That's just yeah. like really impressive. And, um, you know, although like golf isn't as like focused on as something like a, a college basketball, yeah. it still, it still does take a lot of tunnel vision. Yeah. You know, you gotta be able to block out some of the media stuff sometimes or what people are saying or like, Oh, what are people going to think about me if I play yeah. bad? Um, you mentioned an example of that is actually yeah. what I brought up, um, ironically, about Gina weaving, and there was some media and like questions about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so how were you able to like block that out, and mm-hmm. you know, between you and Erica and your coaches, figure mm-hmm. out you know the new direction for your team, and ignore you know, ignore the haters. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's just like anything else in golf. Like you just got to do what you can control. Yeah. You know, like, like you can't, you can't control so much about like what people are going to post or what people are going to say or what even they're going to think of you. Yeah. Um, and so all you can do is just go out and play your game and, you know, practice your way and, you know, set time aside for school your way and just be you. Yeah. And I think that's so much of what our coach just tells us is just to, to be yourself. Yeah. And all of us, I think I've been doing a really great job of that. Um, these last couple of months of just really having priorities and getting things done. Um, and just, yeah, sticking true to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've obviously done that in the fall. You played really well at the East Lake Cup. Um, you're one of the top uh, stroke play finishers, and then you won your match three and two to take Duke um, to the championship. So, what was that experience like? That's mm-hmm. you know one of the most competitive fields in women's golf. And just playing East Lake, that's obviously mm-hmm. yeah to our championship. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Yeah. I mean, that course is probably top three of my favorite courses yeah. like I just love that what course. tops it if it's not number one I would say Liberty National is probably really? my favorite that I mean just like the, the scenery there like I mean yeah. you see like the Statue of Liberty on all yeah. the par threes it's like so that is one of the unreal. 20 questions so that does is remain really? the same yeah Ooh. yeah that definitely probably so you does haven't topped the same. it in the past year I don't think so I think there's very few courses that could top that place yeah but I think what's funny is those two courses that are like some of my favorites are also where I played match play events uh-huh and so I don't know if that has something to do with it because I love match play. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, playing East Lake was so cool. I yeah. Mean, like, the atmosphere with Golf Channel, they do such a good job putting a great event. Yeah. Um, and it's also really cool with the East Lake Foundation and what they do as well because they, you know, like, award the, one of some of the top service members from the men's and women's teams that are oh, really? there. So you're able to hear really cool stories about, yeah. you know, like um, – this year is about like battles with mental health and yeah. just like giving back to the community is something they really focus on a lot. Yeah. And so it's just like it makes it bigger than golf. You yeah. Know, like like it just makes you realize that like like golf is just a sport and there's just so many things bigger that you can like like there's an impact that you can leave yeah. in the world. Um and so like being able to just be out there in that atmosphere was really neat. And I mean of course to play match play with the team was like this yeah. thing is That's so awesome. Fun. Yeah. Of course another example of a one of the bigger events and you showing up. That's kind of a theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think match play is just it's it's really cool. It's a different beast. Yeah. Do you think there is something about like your mentality, like the bigger the event, the better you play? Yeah, I don't I I haven't figured out what it is exactly, but there's just something about it that just like I just get so excited to play, like just to go out and compete. Yeah. But the um, excitement doesn't transition into nerves or does no, it all it, it does like I it, it's not something that completely takes over. If anything, yeah. You know, I kind of turn into this adrenaline that, like, I'll hit the ball way further. Really? But I still am, like, very controlled. Um, like, almost, like, when I get in this zone of, like, I, like, know exactly how I want to hit the shot and I'll do it. Like, yeah. I'm just, like, in this, like, 
this zone, like you can't break it. Yeah. And that's what happens in some of those like big high pressure situations. And that's what happened at East Lake, really. Like I, um, <laughs> it makes me laugh because it's really similar to Jensen's experience where yeah. that match against Ole Miss when I was on 16, I had no idea I won the match. Really? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had you no sound clue. just like it right now. I, I yeah. know. I, that's why I laugh because <laughs> I had no idea I won the match. I mean, I, I hit my shot on the green and I was like, like she had to hit it short in the bunker and I had like this like 50 footer. I was like, I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm just gonna try to hit it close. Yeah. I don't know, like to see what happens. So I hit it close soup like this far and she has like, she chips it to like 20 feet and hands me the ball. And I was like, oh, I was like, and then she like goes to hug me and I'm like, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. we're done. And like my team starts cheering. Yeah. And like the cameras come whatever, and I'm like, oh, am I supposed to be celebrating right now? <laughs> I was like, oh wait, like we just won. Yeah. I was like, oh wow. Um, so it's pretty cool, like those moments and like people like Jensen can attest to it yeah. too, where like you just get in the zone, like even when that's like high pressure situation of like you have the match to clinch the win for your yeah. team, you're like just not even thinking about it. Yeah. Like you're just trying to No, it's game. really interesting to hear. I was talking with Rachel Keane yesterday and she clinched the Curtis Cup victory for the U.S. last mm -hmm. summer, and she said the exact same thing. Like, yeah. she knew she was going to win her match, but she had no idea, like, where the team was at, and that she clinched it until yeah. her team r ran up to her. So it's funny yeah. how, you know, all you guys at the top level, there's clearly some similarity with, like, how locked in you get mm -hmm. in that, that tournament, tournament yeah. feel. I mentioned it a little before, but, you know, you're at Duke where athletics is a pretty big deal, mm -hmm. um, including basketball and some other sports, um, aside from golf. Um, so how does that kind of fit into your college experience? Are you a big Duke sports fan? I am. I mean, I'm just a big sports fan in general. Yeah. But like, being able to come here and, like, I love college basketball. Yeah. Like, I, like just, like, some of the moments that happen, yeah. like, you don't see it in anything else. Yeah. You know, like, the buzzer beaters and the March Madness. Yeah. And, you know, like, St. Peter's going to the Elite Eight. Like, Are you still like a little that. hurt from the Final Four loss? Or? Yeah, you know. It's okay. <laughs> don't want to talk it's about not it. okay. I don't really want to talk about it. It's pretty <laughs> it's pretty tough. Um, especially like just hearing from UNC fans and it's just like Yeah. Oh, it hurts. But it's okay. I'm still really proud of that team. You know, they did awesome and Yeah. Like uh, made the final four, I Yeah. Know I mean, and this Coach K's final year and to be able to just like make the final four and I know they had some tough losses going towards the end of the season, like um, you know, it's still like it's really impressive. Did you have Duke in your bracket? Yeah, I actually had them going out, I think, in the Elite Eight. Oh, really? I thought they were going to lose to Texas Tech. Um, okay, I did too, actually. But then yeah. once they beat Texas Tech, I was like, like, this is it. I was yeah. like, like, that game that they played and the way that they played against that team was so impressive. Yeah. Um, and even, like, Michigan State before that, I was just like, this is, like, looking really like, good. Who did you have when you had all them? Kansas. Okay. I got no it. Way. No I got way. it. Yeah, which is really cool. So I finished my family just nice. did, like, a little bracket thing for fun. Um and I finished second place. So oh, I like, second I like, in Kansas. I That's... like fourteen teams. Um, because my the problem is my mom and I both picked uh, Kansas okay, win okay, it all. Okay. And she she picked Duke win all further than I did. So uh, she's a better Duke fan than me, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I put I, UNC going pretty far, so that helped me out. But I had, I had Kentucky winning. So did you really? Yeah, it was tough. right after we were in Lexington with Jensen. And I was like, the timing's right, the vibes are right. Like it, Kentucky is, I don't know. That's too bad. <laughs> I should have known when I asked her who was going to win, and she said not Kentucky. Yeah, like, that's you know. probably a sign that you shouldn't pick Kentucky. Yeah. If someone at Kentucky is like, don't pick them. Yeah. All right, um, we can transition. Like I said earlier, there's a video last year of you and Erica doing a, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a 20 questions, um, getting to know you better. And I want to ask you a few of those same questions. Um, and yeah, don't cheat. I know the yeah. answers are up. Um, <laughs> see if anything's changed. Mm -hmm. um, so first up, what's your favorite animal? Um, all dogs, but specifically corgis. Yes. Corgi. Dog. Any specific dog? It used to, it used to be corgi. I'm okay, pretty okay. sure I said corgi. Yes. But I think a mini doodle now. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's the reason for the change? Did you have a bad experience with the corgi? Like <laughs> I, attack, it's not that I had a bad experience with the corgi. I just, you know, the mini doodle lately, like Phoebe Breaker has a mini doodle. Okay. Um, Lila, shout out to Lila. Um, but like just the cutest thing like yeah. they brought her to the tournament this last week and i was like yeah like that's just like the cutest dog i've ever yeah. seen so new team maybe mascot maybe. maybe yeah i think that's, that's <laughs> yeah i think that's the case i'm glad you always remembered corgis yeah was. it's because like erica has a corgi and our whole team's obsessed okay. with corgis. like so you like lila more than erica's dog that's a little oh uh no i i'm no comment you won't say that <laughs> no comment no comment <laughs> all right second question favorite pro golfer Tiger Woods, let's go. 
I'd say right now Nelly Corda. Okay. Yeah, I like her swing's just so pure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you said Tiger before. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is Tiger I mean, still tiger, up there? Tiger's definitely like up there. Yeah. I mean, it's Tiger Woods. Yeah. How can you not like? Tiger? Yeah. Got to be rooting for him this weekend. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, number three. What part of the game are you focusing on right now? And obviously, I expect this one to change. I would say my ball striking, trying to tune that up a little bit. Perfect. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> but. Yeah, I would say, you know, especially just thinking about like preparing for ACCs, I'm focusing a lot on like my short game, like okay. getting up and down. Yeah. Um, you know, my like my greens and regs have gone up a lot. My ball striking's gone a lot better. Yeah. Um, so just really like anytime I'm missing a green, like if I'm missing three or four greens, just trying to make sure I'm getting up and down. Yeah. Um, and like with like distance control, like I know we talked about that a bit today because yeah. almost all the greens I missed were like long or short. Yeah. Like nothing's left or right, which is a good thing. Yeah. But getting the distance control a little bit better as well. Yeah. Well, that's good. You said your greens are gone up because yeah. last year you did say ball striking. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was a struggle last year. <laughs> so I'm glad I improved on that. Yeah. All right, number four. If you won the lottery, what's the first thing you would do with the money? Um, probably buy a Chick Fil A. Buy a Chick Fil A. Oh, myself. a whole Chick Fil A. Hmm, that's really hard. You actually said your answer immediately last time, and it is kind of an unexpected answer. So I was surprised. I don't remember what I said. I would probably. You know what? I would, because my parents are trying to build a house in South Carolina right now. Yeah. And because of COVID and everything, it's like a, kind of a mess. And yeah. I think I would help them out first and help them build that house because I love that place. And I know nice. they do too. That's nice. what I would do. Nice. You said buy a Chick fil A last year. Yeah, not surprised by not that. Not surprised. Answer. Honestly, that's, <laughs> still probably a, that's probably a go to. If I had some money left over, I would do that. <laughs> yeah. What's the go to yeah. order? Okay, right now, it's kind of crazy. So I get. Like a like a grilled chicken nugget like count like yeah. I don't know twelve count or whatever yeah. and then I'll get like a mac and cheese put them mac together I've never had Chick Fil A is it good? oh it's good okay it's really good okay you put them together in a bowl and then you get buffalo sauce and but it is really good no it actually sounds good really at good. first I was like well, yeah. I don't know that does sound good yeah. like buffalo like just like DIY those, buffalo mac and cheese like mac, yeah mac exactly. Good. It's, I highly recommend it for anybody. It's amazing. I might go yeah. after this. You you should. It's really good. <laughs> um, all right. Um, last one. Favorite vacation spot. Uh, Marco Island, Florida. Nice. Mm. Hmm. Probably Marco Island. All right. That yeah, checks that out. One, it's the same. Yeah. that Because that's just like, I mean, that's just a place my family has gone to every year together for years and years and yeah. so like I think that's just always going to be such a nostalgic place yeah all right cool um now I want to transition into you know we po- talked about it a little bit but your podcast with Jensen mm-hmm. um Tita Green it's obviously super cool for me to hear about because of this you know journey you know me and Jackson are starting up right now mm-hmm. um with double par um so yeah I would love to hear anything about Tita Green uh so specifically you know how you guys got going and you know how you met Jensen mm-hmm yeah, so I mean, how I met Jensen is a whole story, story in itself. Yeah. Um, so the first time we ever played golf together was in the US four ball. And this was before Eric and I had really met and started playing together. Um, and I played with Julia Dean, who played golf at Arkansas. And we played with Jensen and her partner in the stroke play portion. So we played with her for two days. <laughs> and we did not like each other very much. Just to be like totally blunt about it, we did not like each other very much. Um, Is she going to be surprised here? No, no, no. We've laughed about it yeah, so yeah. many times because we're just like, it's just so funny how yeah. it all started off. And um, Julie and I had gotten really frustrated then because the pace of play was really slow and we felt like they weren't helping keep pace. And so there was a hole where I was like, okay, it's stroke play. Not a big deal to like, you know, take the honors on the tee if it's not my turn. Like it's just stroke play. Yeah. So I get on the tee, tee up the ball. Literally take my practice swings. I'm about to go. I was saying here, Jens, go, um, actually, I think it's RT. So, <laughs> like, would we be able to go? And I was like, oh, that's really <laughs> awkward. I've never been called out for that before. Um, so, of course, I picked up the T and, you know, me being, like, in the moment, I was like, this girl, man, she's yeah, just yeah, not yeah. very nice. Yeah. Um, and, like, we've talked and she said the same exact thing about me because we were all upset because we thought the, the play was slow. So, we weren't being very nice either. Yeah. Um, and so, like, we just laugh about that because then we went a couple years, like, never really saw each other, never really, like, we're like, whatever, we were just yeah. whatever about each other. And then we saw each other at the Dustin Johnson, our senior spring. 
And this was like a couple months before like my US Open and all of that. Yeah. And um, we just like had the same group of friends there. And so like we just like started talking there and yeah. we were like, wait, we actually like each other yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this girl's really cool. <laughs> um, and so then that's how our friendship really got started. And with the podcast, you know, she just called me one day last semester and was like, hey, I have this idea. Like, what do you think of it? Would you want to do with me? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no brainer. Yeah. Like this, is, this would be awesome. Like, why not? Yeah. So you give her credit for the initial. I do give her credit. What I don't know if she's name? taking credit. I think I came up with that name. Okay. I did. I I'm. Pr- I hope I'm right about that. I think I came <laughs> up with the name. I do remember that I was the one that kind of brainstormed a lot of the names. Yeah. It's just like here, like kind of pick which one you like. Yeah. Um. And so I think I'm the one that came up with it. But she also did a lot of the work with the with the logo. She yeah. Did do that as well. She got some help on that. That wasn't as much me. Yeah. So yeah. She's yeah. kind of like the, the name ma- and logo she's, are good. She's so. the mastermind. So. Yeah. yeah. How do you all split up? Like, what's the behind the scenes and yeah. you know, splitting up of work look like? Yeah. So um, I do a lot of like, you know, there's stuff like scripting you got to do. You know, like I see all of this now from like after doing it and now yeah. like, you know, being able to be on the other side of the yeah. podcast and it's kind of cool. But like I do a lot of scripting, you know, you got to do a lot of that, like research on who you're talking to. And yeah, like um, their high school scoring exactly. average. Exactly. <laughs> 67.6. You got to find that somewhere. Point seven. Don't, don't oh, give yourself sorry. too much credit. Sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> I'm not that good. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like research that goes into it. Um, I do a lot of social media stuff, you know, like, you know, posting different content, trying yeah. to find new ways to like get engagement. Um, and then Jensen does like a lot of the editing which like I mean credit I know you do some it's of that tough. too and yeah. I credit to you guys because it is tough it is really difficult um, but so she does a lot of that and she'll kind of like reach out to people and be like hey yeah. like, do you want to go on especially because um, doing the SEC she knows yeah. the girls a lot better than I do um, yeah. she just sees them a lot more so yeah. that's kind of how we split it up do you think in the future you may transition you know obviously you're going to run out of the SECs pretty soon you've mm-hmm. I think 10 episodes now yeah it's, done. it's something like that yeah um, so what's where are y'all going to be headed what can viewers look out for after the SEC mm-hmm. series. Yeah. So we have a lot of ideas. Yeah. And I think that's what's really cool is like we have so many ideas and yeah. so many possibilities. We could continue to do with the conference thing, you know, uh-huh. like I would love to go to the ACC next, for yeah. example, um, and talk to some ACC schools. So we could do that. You know, we could also try to get more variety. You know, a lot of people, I think, would love to hear more of um, perspectives from like college coaches, maybe even like some D2 and D- D3 golfers potentially. Yeah. Um, you know, just hearing a lot more about like the recruiting process in college from different perspectives, yeah. um, I think would be also really beneficial. And yeah. so we could also do professional golfers. You yeah. know, we could also talk to people maybe who've played in college and then gone big time. Yeah. Um, and been like, what's it been like making that switch? You yeah. know, there's just there's so many potential like ways we can go with it. And I think that's what's most exciting for us. That's cool. Forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Viewers, you know, watching this right now, definitely go check out T to Green. Yeah, shout out. Give it a listen. <laughs> love the love the shout out. Yeah, um, but all, like you said, a lot of what y'all have done is you know prepping you know current junior girl golfers mm-hmm. um, going into college on you know relationships with teammates, coaches, you know, balancing time, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what's the best piece of advice that you've either heard from somebody you've had on or that you can give yourself? That's a good question because there's been a lot of advice given. You know, yeah. like we we ask the questions like, "Oh, what's your best piece of advice?" Yeah. Every time that girls have shared it, I'm like, "That is really good." Yeah. You know, um, so I would say sure. oh, if I had to pick one, it would be don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. At least from like a like a college pers- like if you're going into college, like telling people like don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. Like nobody's perfect. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people coming into college, especially with sports, they expect themselves to be perfect. Yeah. Um, especially at this level where like you're competing with national championships, you think like, oh, I gotta be playing great golf right yeah. away. And sometimes it's okay to not. Yeah. And it's okay to like not beat yourself up about it and let yourself still just enjoy like being a student athlete a little bit and just like you know just enjoying the process of yeah. you know trying to be better and trying to and trying to grow like that's perfectly yeah, okay definitely. you know you don't need to be upset because you're not playing your best golf yeah is that from somebody you've had on or is that a megan original a little bit of both okay uh, that's, okay i mean that's something that other people have said and i've just thought a lot about it. i'm like yeah that's very true for me too yeah like that's definitely something i've learned in college yeah what's been your favorite thing about you know doing this with jensen mm-hmm. i mean just be able to like i mean we're learning so much yeah. about each other about other girls and even just like where we want to go with with the direction of this podcast yeah. like we just talked about like you know just like learning a lot about the world of college golf and yeah. being able to really like most of these girls that we get to talk to as of right now like we've grown up playing with yeah and we just have lost touch with them because uh you know 
college gets busy and everyone's yeah. across the country now and you don't see each other as much um, and to be able to just like chat with each other and talk about like what we all have learned is really cool and to be able to know that we're sharing that with other people yeah. I think is like the coolest thing I know Jensen's talked a lot about that too is like we have all this knowledge, you know, we yeah. got to share it. Yeah. You know, it's like, we can't, we can't be selfish and just keep it to ourselves yeah. because, you know, 10 years from now, there's going to be a whole different group of kids that are playing college yeah. golf and like, you know, this information can only help them. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, kind of transitioning off of that. Um, would love to talk a little bit more about your life outside of golf. You know, when mm-hmm. you're not practicing in the classroom or, you know, in the studio, mm-hmm. it could be coming up official tee to green studio. Yeah. I mean, Hey, <laughs> I'm open to it. Um, yeah. So when you're not, you know, in the studio or on the course, um, what do you like to do? Mm-hmm. I love like fitness. Yeah. I feel like that's a, like a, like I think a lot of people say, Yeah. Um, but I just like love fitness. I love being outdoors. Like um, there's a state park, like 15 minutes from here. I'll go there all the time, like at least once or twice a week and like go on walks there. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're like traveling places, like when I go to California, I love to go hiking. Yeah. Like just stuff like that, like getting outside um, you know, the fresh air, like that's also a great way for me to get like a study break is to yeah. you know, just like get a little bit of exercise or yeah. fresh air. And um, that's just something like I've been really passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, you know, do you feel like that takes your mind off golf or when you're out there, you still, mind still wander yeah. to you scores and yeah, it, you some. know, I'll like pop in some music and just kind of get my own world. And I yeah. just like, well, think, <laughs> I'll think about like life, you know, I, yeah. don't, I don't think as much about golf. And I think being able to like get outside away from golf is like, a great way for me to just like take a break from that you know yeah. like you get outside when you're golfing of course but it's just not the same because you're you're thinking about different things with your golf game um yeah but i mean i also really like to like if i can't get outside and i'm just like need a 30 minute break i'll just pop on some netflix and yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah you know just like lay down for a little bit and just like take a break you yeah know? if i just like need 30 minutes of like quietness i'll just like lay there and watch the netflix, yeah of you know? course i have an, a tv show question coming up so i don't want to get too deep into that Ooh, okay we'll, we'll transition into chat. that <laughs> yes um, so we we're going to finish up with our double par questions um mm-hmm. a you know double par on a par four questions for you ranging you know everything golf and not um mm-hmm. first one we ask this to everybody what's your dream for some oh like does it can be like anybody it can be anybody i can be in it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> um i would say nelly corda yeah. swings pure of course your hotel sweet mate. um yeah my hotel sweet mate she's my <laughs> hotel room neighbor uh, maybe ask her to bring her dog with her as well uh-huh. or um I'd say tiger woods like i just have to there's so many questions i could ask that guy and then I want to go someone non-golf you know for the last one like something interesting i feel like charles barkley would be really fun yeah like I just love to watch how bad it's. He's a golf. Like, he's a golfer. Come I know, on. but like, but he's not. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a basketball guy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would just love to like be like your swing sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Did really you cool. watch the most recent match? I think it was him and Phil were on a team together. Yeah, Phil oh actually gosh, had he him played like a match. I didn't know that. I just no, like watched yeah, him. He he's been commentating it. Yeah. No, he awesome. played in one of them, and he's he's terrible but he's not yeah. that bad like phil he's probably gotten a lot better from yeah. like his hitch days like when he used to like yeah yeah yeah. Like i think phil stuff. worked on it with him for like a week or two before oh, it because they were on a team together yeah. and he actually and it also he has phil telling him hit it here do this yeah do that. i could That's, also see phil being like there's no way we're losing you got to work on this yeah so, yeah <laughs> yeah for sure all right next up you know like we've talked about you've had success in stroke play with events like college tournaments and qualifying for the u.s open mm-hmm. um, but also in match play with the u.s four ball so which format do you like better and why match play for sure yeah and i think it's just because like anything can happen and it's also like you can have a bad hole and it doesn't matter yeah like, me dub- like oh spoiler <laughs> me having a bad hole on number two you can watch what happens yeah um when the youtube video drops but like it doesn't matter right? yeah. like it's like next hole moves on you're just one down like it doesn't matter yeah and like and literally you any got team that can win. not spoil again but you did get that hole yeah. back pretty quickly yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um all right next up a staple for many duke students is camping outside kville you know so we did talk about that and had that teed up as a question mm-hmm. um but do you have any plans for you know going to games tenting maybe your senior mm-hmm. year Tenting would be so fun. Yeah. But at the same time, I think I'd have to choose playing in a tournament yeah. for that. Yeah. But I mean, even just being able to walk past it, I feel like has been enough. Yeah. Like I'm just like I had to walk past it to class every day and you I get just the idea. people who live in there like and be able to just ask them what it's like. I think yeah. Like, yeah. Don't you have to stay how long do you have to stay there? There's for? different levels of it. So okay. there's like a there's like a month, um or no, maybe there's like six weeks, a month and then six two weeks. weeks. 
something like that. This year, there definitely was, like, six weeks. Yeah. Um, and so there's different levels, and, like, the earlier you tent, the better seats, and yeah. the more likely you get in, whatever. There's a whole thing, and you have to actually take a test, like, a trivia test in I order to actually, actually get yeah. the tent, which is really hard. Like, this year, I know one question on the test was, like, what's the one team at Duke that has more national championships than men's basketball? And no one knew it. It was women's golf. No one knew it. <laughs> but, like, that, it's kind of trivia questions like that where yeah. it's, like, people are like, oh, wait, we actually don't know that. I'm just women's golf have? Seven. Ooh. And men's basketball is five. Five, yeah. So you got you got some breathing room even if yeah. y'all don't win for a we while. We want to extend it a little bit. Got to extend though, it, but yeah. yeah, we do. Get it up to eight this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up. Um, you get one night out or a round of golf with the Duke Sports alum. So where are you going out to in Durham or what golf course and who are you going with? Okay. This isn't going to be golf related at all. So Christian Lehner. Uh-huh. And I'm taking him to Shooters, which is like our bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've been there. Which, yeah. Are you really? Yeah. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, Christian Lehner for sure. Yeah. Like just talking to that guy. You don't hate it. Christian Lehner. Oh, no. I love <laughs> Christian Lehner. And I love that people hate Christian Lehner. Wow. Know, that's pretty cool. It's pretty controversial. I know. Sorry, guys. Um, so you've told me that... Um, you know, one way, you just mentioned this, one way you like to get away from everything is to turn mm-hmm. on some Netflix, um, mm-hmm. binge a little bit. Yep. So what is your favorite Netflix show of all time? And then what is what are you watching or a favorite show right yeah. now? Okay, well, right now I can say for sure it's New Girl. Okay. I've been watching that a bunch. It's just like a good comfort show. It's yeah. like if you ever just want to watch something kind of like lighthearted and laugh a little bit, like New Girl's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it something I would like as a guy? I don't know, I never really seen It's it. pretty similar to like... Uh, Kind of like it's kind of like the office slash friends okay. in one so it's like i mean yeah that's kind of that's how yeah. i describe it um so like you give it a try i can't guarantee anything i feel like everyone has different preferences yeah. though i would say of all time that is really hard i would say money heist Squid Games or Outer Banks. Like, I can't okay, pick. Outer Banks and those are great. like Netflix originals, too, which I feel like I gotta go with. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I'm gonna talk about Netflix, it's gotta be like the original yeah. Netflix. Outer like, Banks TV is shows. awesome. Outer Banks is so good. Squid Game, it just bothered I don't know. We I couldn't even finish the whole. Just it bothered me the. Yeah, the it's sub- pretty dark. Did you do subtitles or. Oh, yeah, I did subtitles. Okay. Yeah. Um, But, and like the ending also really bothered me, too. So I was just like, that's the only reason I was like, eh, that's why it's not for sure. Like, solo all yeah, yeah yeah but the concepts were it was like pretty interesting yeah um so most people probably don't know this about you but you cut off part of your finger um in high school so what mm-hmm. happened there and how does it affect you know or does it affect your life and your golf game yeah so basically what happened it's kind of like a not great story um i actually cut my finger off with a chair we'll just lead off with that so yeah, that's the exact reaction. I was I expecting get out of a knife. For all the time. A, yeah. No, I cut <laughs> off with a chair. Um, like we'll keep it like the PG thirteen version of like my hand just got like stuck in the chair and that's like how it got like cut off. Like a folding chair? Like no, like a kitchen chair. Okay. Like what, like we had this old metal set of kitchen chairs uh-huh. and so like it was because it was like metal that it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. strong enough to like just cut it off. Yeah. Um but yeah, so that's how it happened. And like playing I didn't play golf from Spring of my sophomore year through fall of my junior year. It was literally like two months after really? I committed. Not like maybe two or three months after I committed. Yeah. Did you have and to tell coach like? Hey, yeah. I so just... I was like that because I just didn't know the coaches very well at the time. Yeah. And so my dad actually called them because I was like getting surgeries and all yeah. this stuff when it had happened, and um, they were like amazing about it. Yeah. And that's I mean that gave me even more reassurance that I'd found the right place because Definitely. they were like, they were like, please just take care of yourself. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Like, are you okay? Like, yeah. make sure you're healthy. Like, that's yeah. all we care about is your well-being. Like, don't even worry about golf right yeah. now. And, like, to I mean, to hear that from both of them is just, like, yeah. Like, that's the people you want to be around. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so I didn't play golf for, like, four or five months. It was actually the summer that Erica had won the U.S. Junior. Oh, really? And there's a story with that, too, that I went and stayed with her during the summer for, like, a week. Because, yeah. obviously, I was so bored. I just had a finger, and I couldn't, like, I had a finger in a cast, yeah. and I couldn't yeah. do anything. So I went and hung out with her, and she was really frustrated with her golf game. And I was like, dude, like, it doesn't matter. I was like, you still got a whole summer of golf left. You could go win the U.S. Junior Girls. Yeah. I was like, like it doesn't matter how you played last yeah, yeah, week. Yeah, you yeah. could go win the U.S. Junior Girls in a month. Like, yeah. It do- like, they, they have no correlation. Yeah. She was like, yeah, you're right. 
and then she went out and won. Of course she did, And it yeah. was really, it was like so cool. For, and I remember watching it on TV and I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then the only thing now with golf that it's really impacted by is like if it gets really cold, it's really sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> like it just like if I score a shot, I'm like, oh, that really hurt. Really? <laughs> but um, besides that, like it's really not. There's yeah. No problem. Sorry, I'm trying to look here. I'm trying to, trying to see it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I don't really ever know how to describe it because it's not like that drastic, but. No. Yeah, no, you wouldn't like notice it. And, no, unless that's you why I tell people and they're like, wait, what? Like, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. But yeah, so that's what happened. All right. Um, next up, you've mentioned to me that you're into um, fantasy football. Um, mm-hmm. So got to ask, how'd you do last year? Who'd you have on the team? Not good? Not good. Not good. Preface um, it by saying I won my family's league. Oh, so, okay. Well, yeah, I did yeah. almost the complete opposite. <laughs> nine out of ten people. Oof. So it was a rough year, but it's okay. You know, minor setback, major comeback, and I have a great year this next year. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan, okay. and I really, truly believe that the reason that we failed is because I had Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback. Yeah. That yeah. had to be the reason. I yeah. mean, Did you have Justin Packers Jefferson? Stink. Nope. That was a mistake, right? Yeah. yeah. All, like, it, it was just set up for failure from the yeah. start. I, it was. It's just... We're, we're flushing this year. We're moving on. Right. Um, last question. So you've accomplished so much in both junior um, and amateur golf here at Duke. So what are your life plans and golf plans going mm-hmm. forward for, um, you know, I'd like for you to touch on this year with the all season and then mm-hmm. after college. Yeah. I mean, for this for this season, obviously with postseason coming up, there's a lot of high expectations. Yeah. I mean, there always is. Our team is really competitive. Yeah. And I'm sure almost any team can tell you they want to win. You know, if you yeah. talk to a team, they're like, oh, we just want third place. Like, yeah. that's, that's probably not very yeah. common. So, of course, we want to win and do well. But I think we're really just um, going to try to get there by just focusing on our own goals. And, like, we have game plans right now. You yeah. Know, like, everyone knows what they got to work on. And so we all just know that if we get ourselves in our best – like shape possible that we're going to be great as a team. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's definitely where we're at right now for this year. Um, and then I would say, you know, just in the future, I mean, the fifth year is now a thing, so that's a big possibility. Yeah. Um, but it also, it also opens like a lot of different doors that's yeah. like really hard to pick. Yeah. Um, I for sure want to try out pro golf, you know, play yeah. professionally. That's just always been a dream of mine. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'll try that out at some point and then, you know, just see where it goes from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your what's your, have been your experiences with pro golf? You've obviously dabbled in it a little bit with the U.S. Open, almost mm-hmm. making the um, I guess the Chevron now feels a little weird to yeah, say. Yeah, um, it is a little weird. And you know, you've just been around some of those people like Paul Kramer and mm-hmm. Christy Kerr. So you know, what have we've heard from Rachel and Jensen some negatives like travel or you know, women not making enough money compared yeah. to men. Um, do you have any thoughts on anything like yeah. that? Yeah. So. Um, my freshman year, Anna Bellots was on the team. Okay. And she plays on the LPGA Tour now. Yeah. And she's been doing pretty well. She got her tour card again this year. And uh, I talked to her a lot about it. You know, she's still around quite a bit. And yeah. Just talk, I'm like, what What has life been like? And especially during COVID, I was like, how did you manage all yeah. of this? And she, she's talked a lot about the travel and how hard it is. Yeah. You know, it's it's very lonely. You know, you get out there and it's, it's every man for himself. Yeah. And that's definitely something I've thought a lot about is how tough that can be. Yeah. And... Um, that's why I'm like, you know, just try it out and see how much you like it and yeah. see where it goes from there. Um, cause what's the worst that happens? You try it out and you're like, this just isn't for me. And, and then you have different plans in life, but yeah. that's definitely a negative I've heard a lot about from a lot of different people. Yeah. Um, and I think the pay is getting a lot better. Yeah. I mean, there's still room for improvement, but you know, you're seeing a lot of purses being increased, yeah. which I think is a really great thing yeah. um, for women's golf, but it definitely can always be pushed to be better. Yeah. It seems like from an outside perspective, there's a lot more, you know, still not enough or as much as there should be, but a lot more attention directed towards women, women's golf. I think the mm-hmm. Anwa, I was talking with Rachel yesterday, is a good example of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, where do you see that, you know, going or at least hopefully going in the next few years? Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, especially like amateur golf and college golf, it was cool this year they added the first ever like televised choke play event for women was this semester. Yeah. So that was really cool to be a part of. Yeah. And I know... There's some other thing like big events that are going to be coming up that they're creating. I think that are going to be really big. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about them yet, but like <laughs> they're going to be like you know big time events. That's yeah. like wow, this is a really big deal for women's yeah, golf. Yeah, like similar to Anwa type stuff. Yeah, pretty similar. Cool. Um, which will be really cool to see. And um, you know, I just I I think my hope for the future with all this is that it gets to the point where it's no longer like a big deal for women. You know, yeah. like it's like a very normalized thing for yeah. it to be like fairly equal and for us to play similar golf courses and play, you know, like 
more televised events and yeah. for it to be less of a big deal. Um, yeah. Which, I mean, it's it's really cool now that the way they're advertising is like, you know, they're, they're trying to promote the game and it's a big deal that yeah, they no, are making mean, these like, efforts. But hopefully someday in the future it can be just like, yeah, women, it's just as big. Yeah, I know what you men. mean. Like get to the point where having a women's again, event at Augusta, like now it's like, oh, it's so cool, unique, whatever. But to the point where it's like, okay, yeah, I yeah. have it too. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's cool. Good luck with all that. That'll be yeah, thank looking you. forward to watching the journey and seeing where yeah, it goes. Appreciate it. And you know, that wraps up what I have. So thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for taking time to talk with me. Yeah, we'll have to get back out on the course. Thought I had you Ooh. for a few holes and then Ooh, are you gonna work on the game a little bit or need to. <laughs> I've been working on the that. game. I just need to get on the course. I don't know. Do you have any advice there? I think just playing as much as you yeah. can at this point is good. Yeah. Even if it's like rough. Like, yeah. You gotta you gotta struggle a little bit to learn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I do think it's thrusting fun. myself. I mean, I love doing it, but the, some of the first times I've been playing since you know last fall, as I've been changing my swing, are you know on camera with new people doing this, which doesn't make it easier. Yeah. But I guess just makes it you know thrust me into it even more. And yeah, I mean, if you can like play you know matches like this on camera against people, yeah. like you're gonna be able to play in a lot of situations. Yeah. But you're, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna learn a lot from this. Yeah, for Don't sure. Worry about it. Well thank you. Thank you.